the San Antonio Spurs just continue to win and, um, you know, surpass expectations. You know, the Spurs were an eight and a half point underdog against the Minnesota Timberwolves on Monday. And when the game was over, the Spurs ended up winning by nine points. So let's go in through a recap of how the Spurs, uh, how this game went for the Spurs, who are now three and one on the season, uh, which is not what Vegas expected them to be <laughs> at this point. So, all right, so let's begin with the first quarter. Uh, the Spurs, um, pretty close in the first six minutes the Spurs were up by six um, but one thing we want to notice about their defense was that they weren't allowing anything easy to the Wolves uh, in that first quarter especially their scoring in the paint then uh, it was their it was their offense that then the, their pace the, the Wolves just could not keep up with them uh, out, out on the out on the, out on the fast break and San Antonio at one point in the first quarter was up 10-0 in fast break scoring by the time the quarter ended uh, the Spurs were up by 11 points, and it was really their ball movement. You know, you can see here by this first quarter box score that they already had 13 assists on 17 makes just in that opening quarter. And so this was a quarter where the Spurs exploded for 39 points, and the, Wol the Wolves' defense was not ready to keep up with the San Antonio offense. The second quarter comes, and these uh, the Wolves, you know, bounce back a little bit here. They win this quarter by by one point. Um, I, some some of the notes that I wrote were uh, the Spurs continue to attack, though they continue to attack the paint against Minnesota. At one point, they went up by 16 points. Uh, Jeremy Sohan had a, had a really strong um, um, first half for San Antonio uh, in this game. He had his he had his best scoring night, which we'll get to a little bit later. Uh, let's see here at, at Cold Wolves. Yeah, within um, let's see here Cold. Wolves within Kelton response. Oh yeah, okay. So here's what happens. I was like, I my little note cards hard to read. Anyway, uh, so the Spurs did go a little cold though in the second quarter. I will note, and then Kelton Johnson actually helped, uh, you know, put the team kind of on his back for for a period there. And you, when you see here that he had seven points uh, in that quarter for the second. But uh, so when, so when halftime came, the Spurs were up by ten points. So there were the Spurs with a ten point lead at the half. Third quarter comes, and this is where it really gets away from Minnesota. The Spurs, you know, just look at this. I mean, defensively, this was their best defensive quarter of the early season. The, the Wolves were only able to score 14 points on 19 shots. I mean, just just uh, absolute stifling defense from the Spurs, especially there uh, in the half court. One thing I wrote here was suffocating defense, uh, getting what they wanted on offense. You know, they, they can, again, they had another 30 plus point quarter, so they get 36 points San Antonio. The Spurs went up by as many as 25 in this quarter, actually more. At midway through the quarter, they were up by 25. Uh, and then in the fast break at this point, they were, they were outscoring the Wolves 24 to 2. And when the third quarter ended, the Spurs were up by 32. And then the fourth quarter came. Now, the Spurs were lucky that they had built that 32-point lead. Technically, it got up to 35 there in the fourth early on. But uh, the Wolves did, you know, to start. San Antonio got a little cold there. They kind of got a little bit stagnant on offense, which is you expect from a, from a young team. Um, and, you know, the Spurs went through a four-minute stretch to open the quarter where they did not score a bucket. So, again, they, they, were, they were very cold to start that, that opening quarter. Uh, the Wolves, you can see here, outscored them overall 35-12. But... The Spurs were able to hold on. They ended up winning the game by nine points. Um, you know, just as this is one of those moments where in this last quarter where it really showed that the Spurs didn't have like that 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 go to score just yet. You know, I know, I know Devin Vassell ended up with seven points there, but you can see here two of seven shooting for him uh, in that quarter. And so that's where a lot of the Spurs players they're, they're they're kind of relying on their motion offense and using cuts and things like that. But when, when the Wolves defense, um, you know, start, started you know uh, using more half court, more zone action against them, they really struggled. And so when the three ball wasn't going in for San Antonio, you can see they're two for nine. That's also when they struggled. But again, when you build yourself a 35 point lead, you have that cushion to make some mistakes and, you know, go cold for a while and, and hold on for a win. And so the Spurs ended up, you know, like I said, they ended up winning this game overall by nine points. It was a comfortable win for them. They didn't have to go into crunch time. And it was, uh, you know, it was their third win of the season and four contests. OK, as far as the shot locations, I'm not going to go too detailed into this part, but I just want to note that both teams were cold from three. As we can see here, they both they both struggle from the three point line. So this gave the Spurs an advantage. If you and your opponent are struggling from the from the from the outside, well, then it's about who's finishing better inside and also, um, you know, it, with the with the interior. And we see here that the Spurs won both of those battles. They won the twos, the jumpers and, and the. And, uh, when, when you, yeah, just the jumpers and the paint shots. When you combine them, uh, they won those by 12, and then they also won the uh, the threes by by 12 points. And the Wolves did win the free throw line mainly because of Carl Anthony Towns. But again, the Spurs had enough to hold on there, and, and the Wolves didn't get it down to crunch time. Uh, again, that's, that fast break scoring was was notable there, 24 to 14, and then also the points up turnovers, 23 20 for San Antonio. Who are the leading scorers? Uh, Devin Vassell again for San Antonio. He ends up with 23 points. Most of his points came from the three-point line where he had 15 points. Kelton Johnson with uh, 18 points, 12 of his points in the paint. Very aggressive attacking. We saw a lot of different kind of um, attacking moves from Kelton there in the paint where he finished uh, very well. Jakob Pertl and Jeremy Sohan were, were both um, you know, terrific in the paint. They both had 14 points. There was a moment 
where uh, I think it was in the third quarter where Jakob and, and Sohan both had 14 points. Com- I mean, they, had, they had 28 points combined and the Wolves as a team only had 30 at that point. So again, Jakob and Sohan were basically outscoring Minnesota almost on their own there in the paint. Uh, who's this? Zach Collins ends up with 11. Very efficient night off for him off the bench. He's been pretty efficient here just to start the season now that he's healthy. Uh, and then Josh Primo, um, you know, had had two, two threes there with 10 points uh, as well off the bench. And then for Minnesota, it was Carl Anthony Towns with 27 points and then D'Angelo Russell uh, for 25 points as their league scorers. The st- as far as the standout players, you really got to look at Devin Vassell here in this one. He ends up with 23 points, nine rebounds, seven assists. Uh, t- 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 you see one steal and just one one turnover again in, in 33 minutes. Some, um, so Devin, when you see this this this, this number right here, 47.2 in the impact, again, it's a model that I'm kind of working with, uh, tinkering with. And so far in these four games, that's the highest uh, uh, impact score that any player on the Spurs has had this season. So Devin's Devin's stat line there, there, 23, 9, and 7, was just, you know, lights out right there for him. Uh, Jakob Perto puts together uh, 14 points, 14 rebound game, a double-double with four assists, just two turnovers and a steal. Trey Jones, you know, that quarterback for the team, doing do, doing a little bit of everything, eight points, seven rebounds, eight assists for the team, three steals. Keldon Johnson had a strong game, 18 points, three, three rebounds, four assists. And then, like I said, Zach Collins, very efficient, uh, 11 points, four, four rebounds, five, five assists, did have the four fouls. And so, and then Sohan, you know, you want to give Sohan some credit here. He had, he had one of his best scoring games, 14 points, uh, four rebounds, one assist, and the, the, the personal fouls were a bit, a bit of an issue. But again, the team uh, held on for this win pretty comfortably, despite, you know, how, how they struggled. Now, when we look at the Spurs on offense compared to themselves now, you know, through four games, you know, what is sticking out, what's popping out on, on the uh, on, on the game tracker that I, that, I, that I keep. And so here's something that to note is that the Spurs are now 3-0 and when winning the three-point line. Again, 3-0 to win the three-point line. Normally, since like uh, they kind of transformed from that, that team that had De- DeMar DeRozan, Lamarcus Aldridge, and then to, to DeJounte Murray, they've always been a team that mostly loses the three-point line. And that's notable, the fact that they're 3-1 and one, and they have these um, three wins. And I want to go back to one key reason why, and it's something to watch for this season, why uh, whether this team's going to continue to stay competitive as the year goes along. It's the fact that you know no longer is it DeMar as their, as their leading um, go-to player. No longer is it DeJounte Murray, two players who mainly you know, uh, likes to attack inside or go to the mid-range, but it's now Devin Vassell and Keldon Johnson who are their leading go-to players. And that's important because as far as the three-point ball, that is a shot that Devin and Keldon are both very comfortable. That's definitely part of their shot diet all the time. They, they you know, they, they, they enjoy taking threes. It's definitely part of their arsenal. That's what makes them both three-level scoring players. And so again, that's something to watch. When your two best go-to players, you know, have the three-point shot in their arsenal and they, and they like to use it a lot um you know often in games that that really helps your team and guides them and then you, you know they still have uh doug, Mc, doug mcdermott coming off the bench with this three-point shooting they still have josh richardson and, and again that is very notable that three in a row now three wins in a row it's been because uh there's, there's been a huge gap there at the three-point line with the spurs winning that gap against that opponent and again traditionally that's a stat spurs normally lose and so that's just something to watch now uh going forward is that if this team continues to win ball games it's going to i think you're also going to see on the other side that that three-point shooting is still cons- staying consistent and they are winning that against their opponents. Uh, the Spurs also, you know, despite have b- despite the Wolves having one of the better uh, big big men defenders in the league and Rudy Gobert, the Spurs had their best night scoring in the paint. You know, again, getting out in transition, continuing to attack at the fast break. That gave them those opportunities before the Wolves could get set and they end up with 60 pain points a season high. Uh, like I mentioned, the ball movement, they had 37 assists. Assistant, okay, my apologies. I didn't see that. 37 assists on 48 makes. Uh, something to note about that, though, is that they've now had two 30 point games in just their four games. Uh, and again, 37 is a lot right there with the season high. They are continuing, like uh, like I mentioned before, that they're going to become, you know, any coach pop team usually does this. They become a good team in, ter- in terms of taking care of the ball. And so, again, uh, they're continuing to do that night by night with now 13 turnovers, which is a new season best for them, just 13 turnovers. That number can- continues to decrease. And then, of course, like I mentioned earlier, the fast break scoring is a whip to go at. A team that has two traditional bigs uh, is, is to get out on the break and make them run. And so the San Antonio did that really well tonight with 24 fast break points, which was a season high. You also want to say that the Wolves were on a second out of back to back. But hey, you know, as far as strategy, that's, that's what you got to do as far as um, going against your opponent. What stood out on defense? Again, that one quarter when they held Minnesota below 20 points, that was very notable because they hadn't done that to any opponent this season. And that's usually the hallmark, um, you know, as far as a quarter goes, of a really good uh, defensive effort in, in that one individual quarter. You know, elite defense when you can hold a team under 20 points. Also, they were very active on defense. They had 12 steals, which was a season high. 
And those 12 steals ended up causing 16 Wolves turnovers, which is 70%, 75% of the Wolves turnovers were because of the Spurs' steals. And then lastly, the Spurs uh, crashed the boards very well. We see here that Minnesota had just 10 offensive rebounds, which is also an opponent season low for the San Antonio Spurs. So again, the Spurs are off to a three and one start. Um, you know, they play the Wolves again on Wednesday uh, and then they got the Bulls on Friday and the Wolves again on Sunday in San Antonio. So let's see, you know, what, what happens. And I, I, again, I think one thing to really note is the fact that if they continue to win that three that three point battle, that's going to probably lead to a lot more to continue to lead to success. And again, that's it's key. The fact that the, the three point shot is part of Devin and Keldon's uh, shot arsenal. So for Project Spurs, I am Paul Garcia.